Good afternoon, this is your friend Angel over at Palm Chevrolet. Today is November 14th, it's a Sunday, and I got this beauty out of the showroom just for you guys because we're celebrating 50,000 subscribers on my channel. Thank you very much for the support, and of course, for the likes. <laughs> that helps a lot. Uh, this is the 2022 Corvette Stingray Convertible, or like you, you guys call it the C8 HTC Hardtop Convertible. It's a C51 package 3LT, uh, with uh, the lift, so it has the all the components you would expect to get in, in a car like this. Uh, pretty much everything you could possibly have, except for maybe uh, you know aesthetics, things that you can change, maybe colors, etc. Uh, but this is a torch red, and a torch red, of course, is one of the most popular colors on a Corvette for many, many years. Uh, as an option, they do offer you for just a hundred dollars, you can get the black spoiler. In this case, it's painted in carbon flash, which is great because everything else here is carbon flash, like the rear bumper fascia. Uh, you got the nasals, that's what it's called. This is an option to get them painted in carbon flash. You have carbon flash wheels, which is a $995 option. And of course, the bright red calipers with the C51 logo, because indeed, this is a C51 package car. Uh, so it's just beautiful. It's just the best spec you can get for this car. Uh, as far off the roof, you can get the whole roof painted in black too, which look amazing. And we ordered this one with the rocker panel, which is, I believe, is a $595 option. And I like it, not only because it looks good, uh, it protects the car in that area when you get in and out with your foot and whatnot. And it's the same material you can see on the splitter here. Uh, the front splitter for the C51 package, has the same kind of material that you see on the rocker panel. So it kind of matches something on the car at least. Uh, so I'm gonna walk around here to show you more about this beauty and of course being a 3LT, 2LT and above models we have the front corp cameras, there's one there, one there there's another camera on the windshield and that's where your performance data recorder is <sighs> man this car is awesome as always I'm gonna give you a core start so you can listen to the rumble of the uh, Corvette but it's funny about this car is that it looks so exotic yet it sounds like a muscle car love the sound of it uh, because you don't expect that when you see a car like this uh, so, so we're gonna look at the key here we're gonna press the start button there it is <laughs> it's awake release the crack and now you can notice when I hit the unlock button these turn signals are se sequential so they call it so they move around quite a bit and they, of course, LEDs in the back, LEDs in the front, along uh, with LEDs in the interior. So all the illumination on the car is LED, and it sounds fantastic. Now, it's worth mentioning, though, when you have a car remote started like this, and you want to open the roof from the key fob, which you can do from here, the engine will shut off for safety because there is nobody in the car with the key in it. And so if I press that button to unlock the roof, this will happen. Watch. But first, I have to unlock it. And then we're gonna hold this. And as I press that button, what? It didn't shut off this time. That's amazing. All right, but well that's cool. Maybe they fixed that. But before it was shutting off, now it doesn't. So hey, you just find out here in my channel <laughs> how this works. Okay, but so you learn something new every day on this car. <laughs> this is a prime example right here. You know how cool it looks when you put the top down. And notice that it had this window on the back that rolled up and down. So you could have the, the roof on and still uh, lower that window if you want to have the full experience of listening to this engine. Uh, what we have here is 495 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque. Acceleration is about three, excuse me, 2.8 seconds, zero to 60. This is the only car in history to be in a two-second club with no turbo, no supercharge. Uh, so it's quite impressive. From the factory, it can do 11 seconds on the quarter mile. There's many people who've done it. Uh, so, and there's more, of course, that are modified and whatnot. So uh, you can do all kinds of things to this engine, being a Chevy engine, push rod V8, old school stuff. You've been around forever, for decades. Uh, so we're still using kind of the same technology on this car when it comes to the small block Chevy. That's what we got here. Uh, so I'm gonna get in here and show you how it looks when you get in your car. First of all, uh, you can see the door panel for the driver. It has memory seats, 
and it had an extra button to tell the seat what you want the seat to do when you get out of the car. So you can technically save the seat position to your preference, and it will memorize the position of the mirror, position of the steering wheel, but it, you can also tell the seat what to do when you shut off the car. So if you want the seat to move back a little when you shut off the car and the steering wheel out of the way, you can do so and then save it on this position. That's what we call the easy exit access. Kind of weird name. Under here, you can see two buttons, one from the front, one from the trunk. Now, if you're gonna open the front, make sure you hold that button a little longer than this one uh, until it opens. Uh, it won't open just by pushing it right away. This is the button to release your door or open your door, and then you have your power lock switch. On the top right here, converter works, we have an extra buttons. Uh, this one in particular is for the back window that I just showed you, and this one is to open and close the roof. Then you have your power window switch, and the biggest button on the whole thing is the button to the mirror. So when you push that one, you close your mirrors, here I am, and you push it again, hey, <laughs> they open again. Uh, of course, you have your mirror controls here. This is for your left and right mirror, and then when you're done using it, push it again, so you don't press it by accident. Under here, you can see there's three buttons for your heads-up display, and under here, there's the activation for your parking brake. It's no longer the big thing you pull or the little switch in the middle is now under here you just press it and it activates your parking brake that's the reason you have a third caliper on the back because it's separate from the hydraulic caliper and to release it you must press the brake first and then push the button again and it release the brake this little knob right here is to control the brightness of your illumination on your car so it illuminates the dashboard etc it won't work during the day it has to be nightlight to see it uh, but make sure that's on if you see the lights you know going off at night maybe you just have to turn that knob a little bit now if you notice we ordered this one with the floor liners which are nice they're actually molded to the carpet of your car and it has the jake logo pardon me for the dirtiness <laughs> of my feet it has the corvette emblem right there it kind of pops out uh, so they're very nice and kind of quite useful really because uh, for 200 dollars you protect your carpet on your car uh, as an option we ordered this one with the these are the GT2 seats. They do come standard on the 3LT. You don't have to pay extra to get the GT2 seats like it is on the 2LT model. Uh, but you can pay extra to get the two-tone seats split like this. It's only $395. So this is a 3LT with natural seats, but they're two-tone, so it kind of looks different. And of course, you have the Corvette emblem right there on the headrest. And you can see the sway for the 3LT around the car. It's right behind the seats, the eight pillars, the whole roof inside when you close it has the suede, you can have more suede, uh, you can have suede on the steering wheel, and you can have suede on the seats for a little extra. That would be about the only thing we didn't pay extra to order in this car, but everything else is here. Another cool thing, when you open the trunk, you just look for the E, and you end up with the same trunk space that you have on the coupe. In fact, you can still fit two golf bags back here, uh, and get plenty of room for stuff. So this is, for example, the uh, air ducts for the rear brakes. If you want to take the car to the track, to the C51, so you can start those in. And these are the regular floor mats, which you still get them when you order the floor liner. So you end up with two sets of floor mats. When you close the trunk, though, you don't have to slam it. This is like the old C7 was. You just push it and show it, and it closes itself. Or like the old Cadillac for the 90s. You remember I do that, too. Uh, to open the front, there's three ways to do it. You can do it from the key fob. You can do it from the door, or you can do it from under the right, excuse me, the driver's side head like so. All you gotta do is reach out under here, and you push that, and notice that it opens twice. This is because it comes with a trickle charger. We ordered this to keep the battery charged in some in winter time. If you're gonna keep your car in your garage for a long time, you don't want the battery dying, you get this for $100, and then you can plug it right here on your 12 volt outlet, and your cable comes out to the wall of your garage and keep the battery charged. In fact, there's a release that glows in the dark right here, properly explaining how you escape from the Mafia, wrong in that direction for your life, and wait for the car to stop, of course. <laughs> now, if you notice, there's plenty of space over here. It's kind of deep, actually. The battery is, for the first time in decades, back to the front of the car. It's under this plastic cover right here. This is for your brake fluid, and this is for your windshield washer. So not much to see here. The engine oil, of course, is on the back, but make sure when you close this, you have to close it twice because the first time it stays open like that so you can get the wire out for your trigger charger with, with, uh, without pinching your paint job with the cable or whatnot. So you have to push it again. If you leave it open, your top speed will be 
up to 26 miles an hour. So very important you completely close that, otherwise it won't work. Now, if you're gonna use the key, again, you have to push the button twice. Now, if I push the button twice, nothing happens. So you have to push the button twice and then hold it, and then it opens. Different than from the trunk, because the trunk and the remote start works when you push it twice and that's it. Let me show you the difference. So if I go to open the trunk, I hit it twice, and now my trunk is open, just like that. You don't have to hold it or nothing. You just press it twice and it opens. So there's more safety involved to operate the front than it is for the trunk. Uh, but, you know, very simple stuff. It's not rocket science. This is your gas cap, by the way. You just push it and it opens and it seals from the inside out. So there is no gas cap. This is a self-sealed gas tank. And, you know, we're required to use premium. Please put premium in your Corvette. Don't put regular. <laughs> so, yes, uh, when you lock the car, that locks too. So nobody can get in your gas tank. Uh, we're mentioning there is a release under here for your key uh, in case your car battery die you're gonna reach under here to put your key that way you can open the car with the regular key in case the, your key battery die or the car battery die that's how you get access to the car oh man let me get in here and show you what this does when you walk in so this is what we call the welcome you close the door and it welcomes you look at that it's gonna have that silhouette floating there with the Corbett logo coming up over here. And of course, this is a driver's car, so everything's facing the driver, the screen. You have all these buttons that looks intimidating, but they're only buttons for the AC system. So all you do is move it in here. And I'll show you how it works. To start the car though, you must press the brake pedal and hit the start button. Because remember, I start the car from the remote. Let me hit the mute button so they don't get the copyrights. And notice that the steering wheel is flat at the bottom, flat at the top, and that gives us much better visibility out of the car. This is the best Corvette I ever been as far as visibility goes in the front. Now the back is a different story, especially right there. If you're pulling out to the left in an intersection, you kind of wonder what's going on behind the panel because there's nothing else you can do. However, we do have the camera, uh, which works perfect. It's fantastic, but it won't work if the top is down. So you end up with just the mirror now if you want to see what it does very simple i just gotta hold this button up and look what happened you can see it in, in, in live footage right here of the top going up there's a camera on the roof so you can see it happening in your mirror right when it goes up and then when it close zoom <laughs> that camera is never off so your mirror could be a mirror or it could be a monitor let me show you the difference this is the monitor this is the mirror so in the mirror you can see well the the back window that's about it i mean maybe uh, but if you flip it then you can see what's behind you in the whole car uh, another thing it lets you customize it so for example you can hit this button here and make it uh, brighter or darker let's see if i can make it darker or i can make it brighter i hit the check mark again and it allows me to zoom so i can zoom in or i can zoom out Quite simple, I hit the check mark one more time. This time, let me move it or tilt the camera. So I can tilt it down, that's my spoiler. Or I can tilt it up. And this stays on all the time. You never have to shut it off. 100% better visibility than just this, right? 100% <laughs> better. So it gets time to get used to. Things don't look quite, you know, you cannot measure how far they are and you cannot not, not know how far they are. But they look closer than what they are really when you're driving it. But once you get used to it, it's lovely. And it works at night too. Gonna hit the OK button and the continue button here to access the infotainment system. And notice that we have the audio button. This allows us to play what's in the radio. You can choose XM, FM, AM, or Bluetooth audio. You have four sources of music that you can choose from. Plus, you can connect stuff to your USB port, etc. You can do that as well. If I hit the home button, you can access my phone from here. It lets you connect up to seven devices. And all you do is connect your phone to Bluetooth. And it will display the image of your phone on the radio through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Regardless of what device you have, it will work. If it's a modern device, it will be wireless. Otherwise, you have to connect it to the USB. But most new devices does it uh, uh, wireless. So this is the first Corvette ever in 21 to have wireless Android Auto. So this is a wireless charger. Speaking of wireless, 
you can put your cell phone there, leave it charging, and it will display the image on the screen without being even connected, just using the Bluetooth. This is a center speaker. So we're mentioning 2LT and 3LT cars get the 14 speaker audio system. It's called the Performance Series from by Bose. And this is the first car in history to be a two-door car, two-seater with 14 speakers. It's the highest amount of speakers a Corvette ever had or any car in the world. Now, opening the center console here, you can notice there is a USB-C, USB-A, and an auxiliary jack along with an SD card. You never remove this SD card unless you want to update your navigation. That SD card is assigned to the VIN number of this car, so it would never work in any other car. There's no point of even taking it out. Now, if you take it out, you end up with no navigation, so you better buy one. They cost $500, but if you buy the updates, they're only $150. Now, that allows you to operate your navigation, which is important and handy because this navigation has a lot of things. Number one, I haven't hit the navigation button, and you notice it's very intuitive and fast. There's no lagging on this. You just push it and it goes. And you can just hit reset and it goes back to the middle. So very, very easy to use. It's also voice command that you can hit the voice button here and talk to the radio if you want. You can change radio stations, give an instructions for the navigation, etc. Uh, but another thing that it does, it memorizes 1,000 locations for your lift. This car is equipped with the front lift, which is this little guy right here. When I push that button, it's going to raise the car and it's going to give me the option to remember this location. So if I hit this left button right now, it will memorize on the GPS this exact place and every time I drive by here the nose of the car will raise automatically up to a thousand places such as your driveway etc if you live in a community that has speed bumps etc uh, the car can do it itself and you don't forget about it so you don't scrape it speaking about scraping I'm gonna lower this thing right now when you push the button it does it in three seconds and it's two inches of lift when you push it you see it says vehicle lower uh, so speaking about scraping things you're gonna hit the front camera view that's so you don't scrape your front bumper. This is a 90 degree angle from the top of your nose to the car. And this tells me in what direction my tires are going. So when I move the steering wheel, the lines follow me. So when I press that button that says front, it only shows me the front of the car. But at the bottom of the screen, you can see there is places to change the field view of your camera. So if I want to see the back, here's my back view. You see the blue line right now showing me what I'm looking at. I can do 180 degrees and notice that I can see cars in the corner now that were not there before. See, this is a regular 180 degrees. I can do 90 degree angle for the nose of the car or the three field view, the three picture view, one camera on the left, one camera on the right. And when you put them together, they give you this view from the top. It's fantastic. And people absolutely love it because Corvette owners always park their cars in reverse for that reason. They cannot see the nose of the car, specifically in the old ones where they have a long nose. This one is not long, but it's low. <laughs> it just disappeared down there, so you don't know exactly, unless you've been driving it for a while, how far is it. Uh, it lets you connect users to your interface, so the, that way if you drive other GM, General Motors cars and you have your settings recorded in your other car, you pass everything over here, including your favorite stations, etc., and applications that you use. Speaking of applications, you can download up to 20 applications to this radio. If I hit the Apps button here, and I hit my Apps, it's going to show me how many apps I have installed already and how much space I have left on my hard drive. It's a 16, I believe 18 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, and it's on the radio itself. So we can modernize this radio without having you to buy another radio or anything like that. We just go ahead and download the new apps. We have Weather Channel, Pandora. Well, there's a lot of them. Spotify, Aha Radio, you name it. There's also a camera button on the screen. It does the same thing we push uh, when you're pushing this one. And... There's also a PDR button. PDR stands for Performance Data Recorder. And that's to show you when you drive in the car, you can see yourself driving your car in the street, basically. And notice that it says storage, no SD card available. We have to put an SD card to make it work. And the way it works is very simple. You're gonna open your glove box right here, pushing this little button in the middle, and that's where your SD card goes. It's only available in two and three LT motors. They, with the navigation, they're gonna have automatically the Performance Data Recorder. And it also had the maps from all the tracks around the world. So you could be on a track and your map screen will be here like in a video game. Let me show you what I mean. You can see video overlay. We're now going to choose port preview. And this is how your footage is going to look when you're driving your car. Here's me accelerating. <laughs> uh, right now I'm in sport mode, so it sounds pretty loud. It shows me the G-Force, uh, how fast I'm going, date, time, how many miles are driven. 
etc. But you can change the reader overlay to something more complex like track preview. And now you notice the RPMs are down here now. This is my G-force, and this is the direction my steering wheel is pointing. So if I move the steering wheel just slightly a little bit, it would tell me exactly how many degrees I'm turning my <laughs> steering wheel. And here on the top, it will show me when it's time to shift manually if I go in track view and track mode. Speaking of modes, let me hit the home button again. And now we're going to talk about driving modes. There's five of them in total. The, my favorite, of course, is the Z mode. And many people think the Z mode stands for the Z51 package. No, the Z mode is because Zora Antov Dunkov, the father of the Corvette, uh, his name starts with Z, so we choose the Z. Regardless, when you hit Z mode, it goes to sport mode. When you hit it again, it goes to touring mode. So this is the best way to navigate between touring and sport mode just by pushing that button. But you have access to another four driving modes down here. I'm gonna show you how that works. So right now we're in touring. This is how the car sounds. Not too bad, not too bad. But if I hit the Z, now it's fully open. And it's gonna show you here too how I'm gonna customize. So. That's pretty good, pretty good. That sport mode is a little louder. So now we're gonna play with the driving mode. So now that I'm in Z mode, I can move this to the right and go to track. And track mode will be the most aggressive. You see, everything is maxed out, steering wheel feeling, engine, brake feather peel, engine sound. And of course, it's more sensitive. So when you hit it, it kind of responds automatically. You can see how loud it is now. <laughs> it's like, it becomes a different animal. The steering wheel is really hard now and everything. So when you are in track mode, it's worth mentioning, you're operating all your egg cylinders. There's no active fuel management involved when you're utilizing that. So uh, that's what it does. Uh, I, I love it either way. Uh, my favorite is sport mode because I like the way this looks. Uh, but track mode, it's serious business. <laughs> it's, it's nothing wrong with that. Uh, speaking of crazy buttons, here's your uh, climate buttons. This is for your passenger, so the passenger can adjust the temperature. This is for cool seats for the passenger, heated seats for the passenger. And this is just the airflow. You can activate your defroster for the back, the front. Here's your power button for the AC. This is how you increase the air, um, air speed, as you said. And here you change your airflow. And then at the very top here, we got the cool seats, excuse me, cool seat and heated seats for the driver and temperature for the driver. Now, if you don't want to use all these buttons, you can use the screen. <laughs> the only problem is you cannot control the seats from the screen. So if I hit the climate button here, it will let me operate a lot of things from the AC, such as the temperatures. You see, I can have the separate temperatures in the front. I can choose the airflow. I can accelerate the speed of the AC or uh, make it slower, uh, but I cannot activate my heated seats or cool seat. That has to be done here on the center console. Um, Another button that I forgot to show you is these buttons here, the shifters. So basically, the buttons to move the car are buttons that you're gonna pull. You can pull the driver button to make it auto, automatic drive, or you can hit M, you push the M to make it manual. Now, if you uh, wanna put it in reverse, you're gonna pull the switch for reverse. Now, P is push for park, and neutral you push, and M you push, the other two are switches that you pull. So the only two switches you're gonna pull is to move the car. Now, this under here is your hand, they call it the handrest, because you put your hand right there. But this is how you change your drive modes. Um, we're mentioning, when you get to the last one, which is track, it won't let you go any further. So you cannot move forward anymore. You have to move back. So before, you can navigate. When you get to track, it's keep back to touring. But now, when it gets to track, it's there and it won't move anymore. Now, the pilot shifters are awesome. They're made out of aluminum, nice material the pattern shifters and also you have uh, radio controls down here for your favorite songs or radio stations and then on the right side you have your volume control then you have this button that mutes the radio but it also uh, hang up the phone or ignore a phone call if you don't want to answer it uh, these four buttons are actually two buttons the one on the left and the one on the right uh, and then you have this indicator for the wheel the wheel can also be pressed to select things so the way it works it operates your driver information center here and if you move this to the left, you navigate to different menus. Right now I'm on the trip computer menu, so it shows me information about trips, gas mileage, etc. And then I move to the right, I can see my performance menu. These are my G4s. I can see my zero to 60 times. I can configure my PDR to start a little lap timer, or I can see the G4s, which is my favorite. Then you have here your audio information. I show you what's playing on the radio. 
It shows you your maintenance menu. This is your engine oil life. It's at 99%. And it shows you the engine transmission fluid life. Which you, you should change the transmission fluid on this car every 20,000 miles. It's recommended. And also every 7,500 miles, you should change the filter. Here's the information on the air filter, which we didn't have before. It also shows you the engine life for engine oil, etc. Now, if I move to the right one more time, I can go to options. And let me... Uh, change the units, check the tire pressure, rotate the heads of display, etc. Uh, so, and, but among many things, you can choose the information on your tire selection. So, for example, if I don't want to see the ELSD coupling differential stuff, I can change it to like fuel economy, um, G4, see? You can see, select what you want to see on your screens. And whenever you're done with it, you can hit the left button here to exit the menu, and then you go back to your regular menu. I'm gonna leave it in display design. What is this? It's linked to drive mode. So you can choose your display design whether you want any tour or sport or track, it's up to you. But I have a link to the driving mode, so that way it changes every time you change the driving mode, which is everybody's favorite. Let's face it, this is cool when it changes. Uh, but some people don't want that many changes in their life, so that's why they, <laughs> they give you the option. Now, another thing I'm gonna do here, because I deselect all the times, I need to go back here and select some of them. So I'm gonna go with, let's see, battery voltage, now that's boring. Yeah, LCD is good and, yeah, lateral G-Force, hey. That is cool, okay. So we have the differential, now it's at 1% because it's not rotating. But when you move it, it starts telling you what you're doing with the car. So that's how your driver information center works. Your cruise control, is, it's about the same uh, configuration that you have on the right button. You hit the on button to turn it on. When it's on, it's going to show you this little symbol down there. You can see it below the zero. It's on. And then you can hit set with the wheel. You just hold it down and it will stay at that speed. If you want to increase the speed, you hold the resume in mean the up button up, the, the wheel up. And if you want to cancel it, you hit cancel, tap on the brakes. The system remember what speed you were doing. So you can hit resume and it goes back to your speed. Now, it's worth mentioning that if you turn off cruise control, you have to reset it all over again. Now, uh, you do have a, I mentioned that you have a telescopic steering wheel, so that helps a lot with the visibility on the car. And of course, how comfortable you get. We had this before, uh, but what is cool about this one is the shape of it. And of course, this center thing here, that's a nice touch, the same color of your car. If it was an adrenaline red seat, this would be red, and then the stitching on the steering wheel. See how many attention to details? All this fresh stitching is the same color of the panels and everything else in the car. So nicely done by Chevy. It's a luxury car by all means. Uh, let me move over a little bit because we're losing <laughs> some sunlight. Uh, over here. It says park brakes release. If you have the park brakes on and you hit the gas pedal, it will release the parking brake automatically so you don't have to like force it to do it. Oh man, but yeah, this is a thing of beauty. And look, I can see everything behind me right there. Another thing, if I flip this, you can see the window rolls down. So if I want the full experience of, you know, the sound of the engine, I can just roll down the window. Now, going to the roof, you notice that we had all this suede around. It's a 3LT, so the roof will look like this in all 3LTs. Now, on the top here, we got the motion sensor. And this is in case you move in the car in a trailer or something, you don't want the alarm going off every time. They give you the option to deactivate or activate motion sensor right here. This is your uh, emergency lights, and then you have on-star buttons. This is to place phone calls to on-star. This is to call on-star. This is for an emergency. Now, the three buttons on the mirror here are for your home link, so you can store your garage door opener, your gate for your neighborhood, etc. And then the mirrors, excuse me, the visors, it's, uh, they have mirrors in them with lights, which is unique because a lot of these cars have little tiny visors with no lights. That's the... That's what I get on my Camaro. They probably have the size of this. <laughs> I have a convertible too. Uh, but yes, nicely done, man. This is, is a beast. Now, I'm going to show you a nice trick on your car. When you have a convertible and you want to leave the roof open, you wonder if somebody's going to stick their hands and steal stuff from your glove box, etc. So we have the solution for you. We hit settings right here. Then we hit vehicle. And we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom where it says valet mode. And this is interesting. You hit valet mode. You put a secret code here that nobody knows. Put, you got to do it twice, by the way. So don't tell anybody what my code is. Boom. Now, here, listen to this. You heard that? It says valet mode active. And 
then it's gonna say this. Ta-da! Ballet mode active, 85 miles an hour top speed. But another thing that I did is that it locks the glove box. I can't open the glove box no more or the center console. So you can safely put all your items here that have value or the glove box and nothing gets stolen from here. Now, you gotta be careful if it's not raining that day so if you're gonna leave the roof open, but it gives you that peace of mind. You know, you don't have to be worried in the cars and coffee or somebody reaching out and stealing your stuff. To unlock it, we just have to put them our secret code again. Bada bing, bada boom, everything comes back to life and I have to mute that radio again with the copyrights. Yeah, you also have cup holders, you push this. And this is a very rare thing to see in a sports car. I'm sure a lot of people would appreciate having cup holders on a sports car. There's not that many that have. It is crazy. But yes, your screen is configurable. You can move all your icons around. So if you don't want them here, you can move it around. Uh, you can do all kinds of things with the screen. And you can keep adding apps as you please. There's no problem with that. I mean, you shut off this light because I turned it on by accident. Now, I'm going to shut this puppy off right here. And let's go see the price of this thing. What everybody wants to see from the beginning. And by the way, uh, we don't make the prices. The consumer, the market set the prices. Sadly enough, this market had gone up quite a bit in everything, not just cars, especially the hot things like the PlayStation 5, the iPhones, etc. But they do go lower in price too, and if you have one, you get all the money back when you trade, etc. So nothing to worry about. It's an asking price, and it's not out of this world. Every used car you find like this out there, I don't care what year it is, it's going for over $100,000, especially a convertible. So this is no exception. I want to show you what I mean. What we see here is the gas mileage is great. 19 miles per gallon combined, city and highway, 16 on the city, 24 highway. And then we move up over here to the standard vehicle price, 79,850. However, we have all the options, C51 package. We can see the front lift, carbon fiber nasals for the roof. You can also see the uh, wheels for $995. We have the red calipers for $595, the rocker panels $595, the two-ton seats $395, the all-weather liners $285, battery protection is only $100, and $100 only for having the mirrors and the spoilers painted. So we have $12,885 in options for a total of MSRP $34,030. Now here's what drives people crazy. It's this sticker here, the dealer market adjustment. This is because the market is this condition. We don't dictate that. We, I don't even get paid on that. So I don't care if you buy it for more or less. Uh, it is negotiable and it's an asking price. So at the end, you end up with $124,030. Now, everybody that sees this car agrees that this is a $100,000 car. No doubt about it. That's the first thing people, oh, that had to be $100,000. Even the cheap ones. So I don't see why it's such a thing that we put the price out there with a markup. It's going to go down eventually. And like I say, it's negotiable. And if you have a Corvette and you trade it, you get it all back. We don't want to pay that much for that for your car either. But we have to because that's the way the market is. So no reason to panic. <laughs> you can still make an offer on the car. I sold them. I've done deals for less than 30 over. But I've done deals for 10 over. I've done deals for 15 over, 20 over. It really depends on the age of the car and how hot it is. And if, like I say, if you had a Corvette, a Porsche or anything like that, you're gonna get all your money back. It's a, it becomes a wash, no different than the house market, no different than the iPhone 13, no different than the PlayStation 5. All right, so I hope you like my video. Keep, down, keep hitting the like button and subscribe. For the first time we reached 50,000 subscribers, so I'm very happy about that today. Uh, and that's thanks to you guys for your support and your views, etc. You can leave a comment. My contact information is at the bottom uh, in the description of the video. I'll leave my email, my phone number, etc. So feel free to contact me if you want to make an offer from this beauty. The one of a kind car, man. 22 Corvette Stingray. Hardtop convertible 3 C51. You have a beautiful day, guys. And i see you on the next one. Bye-bye.